black people in Chicago. I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't register 175 or 200,000 additional people. That's good in and of itself. It sends out all kinds of signals, but the main signal it sends out is this. In politics, if you can't be it, be a threat. And sometimes you're just as well off. If you can't have it or be it, be a threat. Because politics moves on what we call the availability concept. The best guy doesn't necessarily win. The one who has the fewest arguments against him. Uh, the best argument doesn't win. It's the one who has the fewest people fighting him. So you, if, you, if you're not a threat, you're not into anything. Secondly, uh, that kind of registration will change the whole political dialogue. It would be impossible for any candidate for mayor to resort to uh, uh, code phrases and racist terms. They'd have to come up front. Uh, the bargaining game would get real tight, I mean real tight, because out of fear. Uh, secondly, that kind of registration will guarantee that we could ch change the makeup of the city council uh, by changing about 10 or 15 uh, aldermen, not all black, because in certain wards where you have 10, 15, 20 percent black, 25 percent black, they couldn't lack the black, but what they could do is select a independent positive white who would use as a litmus test the black candidacy of the mayor and might get into office and then you'd have your coalition going. So you'd have those things and others uh, that would be byproducts of a strong campaign. But I honestly think uh, the job can be done. You from Chicago? You know where you're going to be for the next few months, uh, right? Where? <laughs> Well, you, okay, leave your smile here. Go home and work. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. I wanted to ask, uh, to what extent do you think Richie David is uh, a viable candidate for Mayor of Chicago? And to what extent does he control this positive machine? Uh, he's a very strong candidate. Uh, I don't think he, it's hard to say what, he, uh, what part of the machine he controls. In my opinion, if it were put to a vote among the ward committee when asked to Daly or Byrne, I, I am a, 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 a secret ballot. I think Daly would win. Uh, many of the ward committeemen knew his father and worked with his father, and they relate to him. Most of the committeemen don't particularly like Mayor Byrne. She's abrasive, injudicious, unthinking, intemperate, uh, and, uh, you know, just, just keeps everything upset, you know. It's not because she's a woman. I know some men just as bad. Uh, but she's the mayor, uh, and uh, on those grounds, that, that would happen. He is a viable candidate. Uh, I've been asked the question, what is his relationship to the black uh, to blacks? I think it's horrible. I serve with Richie Daly in, in the Illinois Senate. I think he's a racist from the heart, uh, head to toe, hip to hip. He's just like his daddy, a racist. The difference being his daddy earned what he got. That's the difference. So I, I don't think he's a person that we should be concerned about. The problem is, it's a serious problem. Uh, if, uh, why we need a black candidate is because it's Tweedly D or Tweedly Dumb, Tweedly Burn or Tweedly Daily. And I think we're entitled to a better choice, but we can't get it unless we put our own candidate up. We got to do that. Now, there are those who says, well, if a black candidate runs, uh, it would pull votes from Daily and might reelect Burn. Well, that's something one has to think about. It's a danger. So to overcome that danger, just make certain the black candidate wins. But uh, I think those choices are horrible, uh, horrible for us. But uh, if we were head on race between Daly and Byrne, I think Daly would win. Yes? What are the possibilities of the candidates? What are the possibilities of me, Ray? I like my job. Uh, really, this, this is a good job. This is a good job. <laughs> I, you know, uh, and it's a good job for a lot of reasons. It's not just a good, it's not a good job just because people treat me well. They treat me better than they ever treated me in my life, you know, and I must say that's enticing. I have an excellent staff. I mean, uh, it's, it's just a marvelous the kind of people I've been able to get to, to run our shops. And uh, the thing that's enticing about Congress, um, say, say, unlike the state legislature, you can get information. You can push a button and get that information. We got the, we computerized, the Library of Congress is there. 
Some of the smartest people in the world are in Washington. I've never seen so many young, brilliant people. They make me feel retarded. I go in my office, I just feel like I don't belong there. These kids are so smart. So uh, I've been able to do some things I never dreamed I could do. I never thought I'd have the resources to do it. And every day you can just push buttons and move things and help people's lives. It's just it's unbelievable what you can do uh, with this job. So I, I like it. I really like it. On the other hand, I don't think there's a single politician in the world who wouldn't want to be mayor of the city of Chicago. I mean, that's, that's a hell of a job. Uh, it might kill you, but boy, you sure look good sitting in the saddle, you know? <laughs> but you can't just walk in and sit down. You, you got to work. Uh, it's a hard, tough fight. And although many, many people have asked me to run, and I've come out ahead of all these polls and all that sort of thing, there are other people who feel that uh, I shouldn't do it, that I should stay where I am. And, Frank, I'm, I'm flattered. People say, well, we, we can't afford to lose a good congressman just to get a good mayor. Why don't we just keep the good congressman and look for a good mayor? You know, that makes you feel good. But I take it seriously. So I have said publicly that I'm simply considering the possibility. And uh, if the registration hits the kind of goal I think it will hit, I have said I would seriously uh, consider it. But to be perfectly honest, I'm looking for a candidate. I'm looking for a candidate. I was on the radio show last night, and several people called it rather irate. How dare you not run for mayor in the city of Chicago? <laughs> well, it's getting kind of thick, you know. But uh, I, I can't answer it any other way. I'm flattered to be wooed, but uh, I don't know. Let's take another question we can end on. <laughs> I think we can uh, take one more question. Repeat, I'm sorry, I missed part of it. What specific roles do you feel that black students should play in advancing leadership in this country? Well, I, uh, I have had my eyes opened about this institution. Uh, I thought I was an authority on the University of Illinois in Champaign. As a matter of fact, for years I worked with your budgets and suffered with your programs and all that. I thought I knew what was going on here. But I must say that the Afro-American studies situation has uh, as I have discussed it with Mr. Word, or rather as he has disclosed it to me, has opened up new vistas of thought for me. Uh, what he's saying is simply this, and I hope I can paraphrase him ac accurately. He's saying that this is one of the major institutions in the world, and they have here the facilities that you just don't find in other universities uh, to any great extent. And for some reason, now, this institution is tracking some of the finest black minds in captivity. Now, he told me that. I didn't make that up. And I'm convinced that based upon what I've seen around here today, he is right. Uh, in other words, some things have come together, and they're in place here. And it would be foolhardy and foolish and stupid not to take advantage of. In other words, uh, you got to meld the opportunity with the talent. And I would hope that out of this, uh, this school, this university, to which I've dedicated a lot of time uh, with, uh, would uh, provide the research facilities and the wherewithal why, uh, through which uh, students such as yourselves can come in here and hone your research and make this a fountain or, or an oasis in the country for the development of black political uh, dialogue. Out of here should come in-depth studies. This should be, in a sense, a research think tank uh, to which people throughout the country, black and white, would look to find out what blacks are thinking, doing, and where they're going. So what am I saying? I think you should uh, maximize the possibilities and the potentiality of this university uh, by working with the facilities of it to prepare yourself to lay the groundwork for those who will follow you and at the same time, prepare yourself to move out into these various jungles, Chicago being one of them, to sort of take the bull by the horn and look and simply say, well, we're going to do something about this mess. Uh, that would be my suggestion to you and each and every one of you. And I commend you for your concern. I commend the Afro-American Studies Institute for really trying to, uh, to open up some minds. And I commend all you fine students for suffering through my diatribe. Thank you very much.